In this video, I'm going to guide you through the six productivity habits for working from home or if you're back in the office. Either you're someone who finds it hard to get motivated and productive and be effective throughout the day. You get distracted or stuck or lost. Or maybe you're someone who's ticking off everything from your to-do list, but are feeling drained, fatigued, and dissatisfied at the end of the day. If either of those are you, this is the video to watch. The first piece of advice I'm going to give you is really simple. Plan for a commute. Now, for those of you that are working from home, you may be wondering, this doesn't apply to me, Jay. Well, actually it does. What I find is that if you create a 10 to 15 minute commute in your day, and instead of diving straight into work, waking up out of your bed, walking to your kitchen table, you actually take a walk around the block. You're basically tricking your mind to feel like you're going somewhere. One of the reasons why we're all feeling so encaged and so enclosed is because we don't feel like we're changing environment. We don't feel like we're moving from place to place like we were before. So if that's your case, I want to make sure that you find 10 minutes at the beginning and the end of the day to go to work and come back from work and use that as time to actually dive into a podcast, an audiobook, or a blink on Blinkist, whatever works for you to give yourself some time to prepare for work. Now, this second tip I've recommended to a lot of corporations and they've found it life-changing and so useful. I want you to start creating a five minute gap between each and every meeting in your schedule. So if a meeting finishes at 10 a.m., the next one starts at 10.05. I don't want you to schedule any meetings back to back from this point onwards. You may think five minutes is not a lot of time, but that five minute gap can be life-changing. Here's how. When you take out time between each meeting, you get that really important time to decompress and prepare for the next meeting. You're now not shifting your energy from one thing to another thing to another thing straight away and feeling like you're just stressed in between, not even getting time to comprehend what the next meeting is about. I've got five habits for you that you can do across five minutes that are going to keep you feeling productive, effective, and focus on your well being throughout the day. The first one is water. It is so important that we take a moment to rehydrate between meetings. It's so important to stay hydrated because we need to be drinking around two to three liters a day. And when we're doing that, it boosts our brain function, it allows us to feel clearer, it's fantastic for making us feel energized throughout the day. The second thing you're going to do in your five minute gap is walk around. This could be in your bedroom, in your kitchen, wherever you get a moment. It's really, really important to get moving. So many of us are feeling so stagnant and stuck at the moment because we're sitting at our desks all day long. We no longer have a lunch to get up to or a meeting on the other side of our offices to meet someone. We're in the same place. This is causing a lot of issues with our posture, the way our body feels, the way our muscles are. It's not natural for us to be locked into a sitting position throughout the whole day. The third is to watch. By watch, I mean watch a view a window, look out of a window, look into the sky, take a step out for a moment and get some fresh air. It's so important that we look out into the distance. We've got so used to just staring at screens and devices and books and schedules that are right up in our face that we're not giving our eyes the opportunity to look out into the distance. Now this fourth one's a little more interesting and you may need a little bit more time for it, but it's the idea of wonder. Allow your mind to wonder, allow it to think of a new idea, to be creative, to think about something unrelated. This is where creativity comes from. This is where that feeling comes from, that you're innovating, that you're allowing your mind to connect dots that otherwise you might seem as disconnected. And the fifth and final thing that you can do in those five minutes is to wind down. And one of the best ways to wind down is through your breath. Allow yourself a few moments to breathe in for the same amount of time as you breathe out. A very simple way to do this is breathe in for a count of one to four 
and breathe out for a count of one to four. How many of you ever felt that your mind is ahead of your body? Your mind is racing around, but your body feels sluggish and tired. If you want to bring your body and mind back into sync, back into alignment, you want to breathe in and breathe out for the same amount of time. Doing this breathing practice allows you to walk in with a clear mind, with a relaxed body, and reduces your anxiety throughout the day. Now, some of you may be using your car to commute if you're back in the office or you have a job that relies on you being inside your vehicle. Now, if that's the case, I have loved the fact that Blinkist allows you to listen to the Blinks. So you may have heard me speak about before how Blinkist summarizes books into Blinks. Well, instead of just reading the chapters and the sections and the highlights, you can also listen to them. This has become one of my favorite new habits because in around 10 to 15 minutes, I can understand the essence and a book in summary. One of the books that I'm rereading right now that I'm absolutely in love with is called Measure What Matters. It's huge because it talks about how if we're not measuring something, we can't improve it. If we're not focusing on something, we don't know how it can become better. So for me, being able to listen into these blinks and learn at the same time while I'm on the go, while I'm on the move, is such a refreshing way to stay on top of my growth and my focus. I really find that using my car time wisely is a game changer. This next one is all about shifting from what we call small talk to big talk or deep talk. I first learned about this through Dan O'Reilly and his Irrational Labs, where at an event, they encouraged us to ask more vulnerable, deep, and bigger questions. How many of you are tired of small talk? How many of you start every meeting in the same way? Hey, how's it going? Yeah, it was good. Yeah, you know, same old weekend. Yeah, you know, it's, it's been a lot. All right, let's get to work. We literally have the same conversation on repeat almost seven times a day in every meeting. And guess what? Neither you nor the other person enjoys that conversation. Now this point also applies whether you're working on Zoom or whether you're meeting in person again with people. We're so used to asking someone, how are you? And it's kind of a throwaway question. People usually come back and give us one of these five answers. Good, bad, okay, fine, or hmm. We don't learn anything about the other person. We don't get an opportunity to deepen our relationship. And it's almost like we didn't even care when we asked the question. But what if we ask someone, hey, what's a challenge that you've been working through lately? How could I help you through it? Or what's something that you're trying to overcome that you may need an insight on? This type of question gives the person an opportunity to really share what's happening. That vulnerability allows you to build a deeper bond and deeper connection. And now you're actually engaging with someone in a refreshing way. Now, if you're like me and you're still spending a ton of your time on Zoom, I mean, I'm recording podcasts and interviews with some of my favorite authors. We recently had Oprah on the podcast about her new book, What Happened to You? And when I'm speaking to people on Zoom, I found that it's even more difficult to build rapport or connection, especially if you've never met them before in person. One of the ways I've been able to cross this bridge is by being curious, but not creepy. Now, what I mean by that is about asking someone about something that's in their background. I think by now everyone knows their Zoom shot and their Zoom location. They have a few things in the background, maybe a piece of art and maybe a picture of their family. And this is such a beautiful conversation starter, especially if you're trying to build a new relationship. Recently, I was on a call with a client and I asked him about a really interesting thing that he had hung on his wall behind him. It was a paintbrush. I was so fascinated that I had to be curious, not creepy, and ask him why he had it there. He said, my first ever job when I was around 14 years old is I used to paint fences. And after painting fences, I got to paint rooms. And after painting rooms, I got to start painting homes. And now he's an executive and a director of a large company. And he said that he hangs this paintbrush on his wall to remind him of where he started. Give the person you're speaking to an opportunity to tell you a story. I promise you will be memorable and meaningful. And if not, hopefully it makes one of you laugh. And this final point is something that we probably already know and do, but I've seen it work wonders for me. Turn off your notifications and turn on chill, relaxing work music. 
I've done this for such a long time where I have a playlist that I listen to that allows me to just get into the zone. What I find music does, especially instrumental music, that's what I focus on. I try to stay away from popular music that I may listen to in the car or while I'm in the gym. What that does is it gives the mind enough distraction, enough rhythm, enough pattern, enough momentum, so that you can actually focus your mind on the activity at hand. Now, some of you may prefer silence or working to chatter, and that's fine too. You can even put that type of music on. But for me, instrumental beats and rhythms are a fantastic way of getting into the zone. Turning off your notifications is just a no-brainer if you're really trying to do some deep work. 